When you hear calls for the end of systemic racism, that means structural racism, systems with housing, education, health care that create and maintain racial inequity for people of color. Another system that is included in all of that, of course, are prisons. The United States has the highest rate of incarceration of any country in the world, yet we represent only about 5% of the global population, but a whopping 25% of the prison population. Our Victor Williams shows us how the legacy of slavery and racism in this country contributed to this. The 13th Amendment is thought to have abolished slavery, but it actually, in a sense, solidified it with a loophole that allowed servitude to people who were convicted of crimes. This was largely used as a means to control newly freed slaves, and it has evolved into what we call today the criminal justice system. Remember, southern states relied on slavery for their economic system, and once it was abolished, they still needed to find ways to make up for the loss of free labor. So what did they do? Those states revised their slave codes and created black codes which made various acts illegal if the individual charged was black. Things such as possessing a firearm, supposedly a Second Amendment right, or arresting a black man for not having a job. This often forced former slaves to take a job with their former owner. Eventually prisons were built and started earning massive profits, upping the demand for the commodity of free black labor. This supply would be further ramped up by Ronald Reagan's war on drugs, Bill Clinton's three strikes law, and unfair sentencing guidelines. Since 1970, the incarcerated U.S. population has grown by 700 percent. 700 percent. There are 2.3 million people in prison, and blacks are incarcerated at more than five times the rate of whites. The system of mass incarcerations has handcuffed the black community's potential by destroying family structure, economic growth, and other liberties normally associated with freedom. Just last month, President Biden ordered the Department of Justice to not renew its contracts with private prisons. The president called it the first step to stop corporations from profiting off incarceration and his administration's plan to address systemic problems in the criminal justice system.